Awesome. So faith uh, to overcome, to overcome. Faith, uh, part two, right? Uh, so yeah, so on my next slide, I said, think beyond the norm. When you consider what an addiction is, think beyond drugs, alcohol, gambling, sexual immorality, and the like. Some form of addictions are a product of our modern era, like technology addiction. Uh, I did a quick research, a Google search to find uh, Google search defining addict is an enthusiastic devote, devotee of a specified thing or activity. So you are a devotee of a specific, a, spe, a specified thing or activity. So you become devoted to something. And before you know it, like that little bird, that little bird continued to become devoted to whatever that yellow thing it was eating. And, and, and uh, the, other, the other definition is a person who is addicted to an activity, habit, or substance. So it's an activity. So just constantly putting all your effort and all your time on a certain activity and a certain habit. Uh, like for us, uh, addicted to soccer, it becomes a habit that I'm always, I have to watch soccer at all costs, you know? Mm. That will affect my sleep. That will affect. So what will happen is in the morning I won't be able to prepare for. Wanted, I wanted to prepare for the week because usually some of those soccer matches happen on a Sunday night. Um, as I'm sharing, I know that Arsenal is playing at 2:30 a.m. in the morning, and it's crunch mm. time. It's crunch time in the season. But if I wake up and go and watch it, it means it will mess up my Monday. So so those are some of the definitions of uh, of addiction and. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Romans 6 to 16, don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose? Amen. Mm -hmm. You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. I'm pretty sure that we all want to choose God so that we can, that would lead us to righteous living. So what the Bible here is saying that, what are you a slave to? Where are you putting most of your effort and your time to? Are you putting your, all your effort to your job and your job is, still, is now stealing your time with your family? Is now stealing your time with your spouse? Uh, you can't even go to a kid's, um, your own child's uh, sports event or whatever it is because your job has made you a slave. But guess what? Australia has made it so simple. Australia is a country that puts family first. They've given us that opportunity that when, when there's an event, you can simply tell your boss that I need to go and watch. It's just a decision that you need to make. So what is it that is slaving us that we are choosing and, and that will end up leading us to death? Just like that little bird, it kept on choosing. I want to believe that every time it was looking back, I think it was looking at God saying, I really want to stop this, but how do I stop this? Then it kept on going and so on. So that little yellow thing, whatever it was, whatever addiction it had, it continued to cause it to sin and it, end up, it ended up leading it to death. But Carrie's church family, we want to choose to obey God. And we know that when we choose to obey God, we're going to say, hey, I want to identify that thing that is stopping me from reading the word of God, from praying, for spending time with Jesus. I want to choose to Jesus to be in control of my life. I want to choose that Jesus is going to be the one who's going to guide my path. Jesus is, going to, is the one who's going to be on the driver's seat of my life. And I know that when we do that, we to lead us, to righteous living and righteous living is the best living you know that the righteous living will attract prosperity will attract every other thing that we desire in our life and yet if we allow whatever the world is offering it will lead us to sin and um first corinthians 6 12 says you say i am allowed to do anything but not everything is good for you yes we are allowed we are not saying, when, we are, when I'm sharing this, I'm not saying don't be on your iPad, don't be on your phone, don't do this. Everyone is allowed to do whatever. That's why it is, it is put out there for us. Phones are made, 
or were made to make life easier for us. So now you can access your emails and everything that you need to access anytime. So you're allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. Even those things that we think are good for us may turn up to be our enemy. You are allowed to relax after a day's work and watch a bit of Netflix. There is nothing absolutely wrong with that. You are allowed to do anything, but what the Bible is saying, don't become a slave to that thing. That's yes. where addiction comes into play. You are allowed to watch Netflix. You are allowed kids to be on your iPad and chat with your friends and uh, do all those things that you want to do on the iPad and watch all those YouTube videos that you love, the Norris Nuts, whatever it is that you watch, you know, you're allowed to do that. But do not allow those things to make you become a slave. Don't be a slave to them. And when you become a slave to those things, that is addiction. And when you become addicted, it means that you're putting all your focus on things that are not important, that are things of this world and not things from above. And the things from above are the things that will, re that will lead us to righteous living. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, so defining the problems or problems causing addiction. Um, number one is I want to fill that hole. What happens? Why do we get entangled and addicted to all these things? Is we are all trying to fill a hole. Addiction is often wrapped up in self-identities as one attempts to fill a hole in life with pleasures and emotional euphoria. But only Christ can fill the heart's deepest desire. Only Christ can fill those holes that we long to fill. You know, we long to fill those holes of happiness. And we, we look for the things that make us happy and say, hey, this makes me happy. So you can't take this away from me. This makes me happy. Whenever I'm feeling down and sad, I've got my happy place. I've got something that I run to. That makes me happy. Look at that little bird. Whenever it got onto that little yellow substance, it started flying. It made them happy, you know. But the world happiness only lasts for a bit. The world happiness only lasts for a certain period of time until you realize that that thing is not making you happy anymore. Then you jump on to the next thing. You know, and you try again and you jump onto the next thing and you try again and you realize by the end of it all, you are drained, you are stressed out, you've lost your relationships, your finances are in turmoil. Everything is not going according to plan because you are searching to fill a hole with the wrong things. We're searching to fill the pleasures of life with the wrong, wrong things. But Christ is saying, hey, Come here and I will give you rest. I will set you free. I will give you that peace that surpasses all understanding. Are you searching for peace through those other things? Are you searching for peace through your smartphones? Are you searching for peace through all these addictions that we have? That's fine, but I will give you peace that will surpass all understanding. I will give you peace that is eternal. I will give you peace that will last forever. Our hearts will always be restless until we find rest in something. That's how we're created. Our hearts will always be restless. We'll continue to search and seek for all these things. But Jesus can give us everlasting rest. He's the only one who can give us everlasting rest. Are we looking for everlasting rest? Only Jesus can give us rest through his grace and through dying for us on the cross. What whole in your heart are you trying to fill? This is a question that I'm having for us all. I've got holes that I've been trying to fill in my heart. I've got holes that I'm still trying to fill in my heart. But what am I using to fill those holes? Am I depending on my business to fill the holes, the gaps, the financial holes, the everything? But is that going to lead me to success? Most probably not. But if I put Jesus first and say, say Jesus, this is my heart's desire. This is what I want to do in my life. Help me, Jesus. I want to believe that those holes will be filled in a much more amazing way. Amen? So, yeah, so addiction starts with us trying to fill certain holes. 
We're trying to cover some gaps and these gaps can only be covered by Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. And we are trying to fill our hearts. All these voids, our hearts, uh, we're trying to fill our heart with all these things. We're trying to cover those holes in our hearts with all these things. But the Bible here is saying God has already planted eternity in our hearts. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning of to the end. I want to believe that if we start tapping into God's will, if we start praying to God and say, God, can you show me your scope of works? I want to see your scope of works in my life. Because we're all a working in progress and God has a plan for us, plan to prosper, plan to give us hope, plan to give us everything that we desire. And our mission is to pray to God every single day and saying, God, show me that scope of works from the beginning to the end. And you realize that when God starts unraveling everything that he has in store for us in our life, you find that we become less and less worried and less and less worried about that, what the world is offering us. And we become more consumed to what God has for us. You know, so addiction is more about us trying to fill a hole, trying to fill a gap. And yet God has already planted everything we need in our hearts. He has given us Jesus who died for us on the cross. And when Jesus said died, he said, hey, it is finished. It means that everything that we are going to face in life, whether bad or good, Jesus has already, has already sorted it out. All we need to do is rest and allow Jesus to fill some of that emptiness that the devil comes and steal in our lives and say, Jesus, I'm feeling empty in my relationship. I'm feeling lonely. And um, watching whatever we are watching on, on TV, even if it's some stuff that is not allowed, we'll never feel that loneliness. We can go and try and search for, 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 for fulfillment and, and trying to fit in through all these other avenues, but we'll never, at the end, we'll end up right at the end in the deep end. But Jesus is saying, I am here to fill that cup. He is the only one who can fill that cup. Hallelujah. Amen. Galatians 5, 16, 25, let it reads, I'll read it, I'll read it aloud. I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. They won't, then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Addiction is just a sinful nature. It's just a craving that we have in our life. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is opposite to what the spirit wants. So let our hearts and our bodies be filled by the spirit of God. When we are filled by the spirit of God, we will start doing what the spirit wants and we start suppressing more and more on what our bodies want. And what our bodies want is that sinful nature of wanting to do evil, of being gripped and being uh, attached to all those things that we are adapted to. And the spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. It is true. We, they are constantly fighting. The battle is, is in the mind. We are, it is constantly fighting. The body wants to do this, but your mind is saying, that is not good. Uh, last week, we read, we read that, 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 that verse that said, I want to do it, but I, I, I'm doing it, but I know it's not wrong. I end up doing it anyway. It's all about the constant fight that we have. You know, We're constantly fighting uh, the body is constantly fighting the spirit man, you know. So you're not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the spirit, you're not under obligation, under obligation to the law of Moses. So the spirit of God can fill our cup. It can fill those holes. But, you know, when we, when we are not filled with the spirit, we then enter into this situation where our sinful nature takes control. And here the Bible is saying the results are very clear. These are all these addictions, sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, adultery, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissension, division, envy, 
drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. These are all classified as addiction. You'll find yourself in addicted to all those things that are sinful. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Addictions will lead us to not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desire of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Those who belong to Jesus Christ have nailed their addiction to the cross. And they've said, hey, I am done with this stuff. I want to follow Christ. I want to pick up my cross and follow in the, on the footsteps of Jesus. And since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. How can we get rid of addiction? Follow the Spirit's leading. The Holy Spirit will lead us in the right direction. He will put a light in our paths. And when we are feeling overwhelmed, when we are feeling lost, when we are feeling out, when we are feeling that we don't fit in, the Holy Spirit will lead us. He will remind us of scriptures that will say, you are more than enough. You are more than a conqueror. You are, you, you, you are blessed beyond measure. You are a blessing. Greater is he in you than the one that is in the world. You know, you've got a, bra you've got a friend that sticks closer than a brother. You're not alone. Jesus with you all the time. But when, you don't allow, when we don't allow the spirit of God and when we allow the sinful nature, which is the devil, he will say, hey, you're a lonely man, but I know stuff that can help you to, 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 to curb that loneliness. And those things end up leading us uh, to addiction. The next point is the lies from the devil. Have you ever heard these statements, self-care, look after yourself first, you know? You need to look after yourself first. Imagine if God had decided to look, say, I'm gonna look after myself first, we'll all be lingering in sin. But for God so loved us that he considered us first. And he said, I'm gonna give Jesus to these people so that their sins can be washed away. So self-care and look, these are lies from the devil. The devil will say, hey, you need to look after you first. You are more, that, more important than anyone else. But we were created to serve. Jesus came onto this earth to serve us. We were created to serve, to look at other people's feelings and, 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 and try and help in every possible way. That's the gospel. The gospel is grace being gracious upon each other, looking after each other, not being self-centered and looking at, after ourselves. Pastor a few weeks ago taught us about this. Self-centeredness would lead to destruction and it would lead to addiction. When you start looking after yourself first, you start making yourself, putting more effort on yourself and you start depriving yourself on looking at what God has in store for you and the calling that you have. No, under, no one understands you. You are different. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a lie that the devil tells us. I am different. No one will understand my situation anyway. So that's why we end up getting stuck into these things that we are stuck into because we are trying to prove ourselves and say, hey, you don't understand me. This is what, who I am. But that's not who you are. God has never made you to be like that. God has made you to be the salt of the world and the light of the world. You're supposed to shine and beam through your actions. The world needs us to shine. The world needs us to be a light. And the world needs us to be a salt. In this decaying world, the, wo the world needs us to be salt. And salt, um, the, how salt works, if you, if you see when they, when they, when they make the biltang, the, the nice, beautiful dried meat, you know, they put salt in there so that it doesn't take, so that the, the meat doesn't decay. So salt hold everything together. So we are the salt of the world. We are supposed to hold everything together by, by, by showcasing our lives to the world so that the world can want to know and tap into what we are in so that they'll ask us question, how do you do this? Why are you so happy? Why are you so joyful in this world that I'm so stressed? I'm so, 
everything is going against me, but even when things are going against you, you seem to be excited about life because we are different in that way. We are salt and light. So, so people have to understand you that you're a child of God. There's nothing like no one understands me. You People have to understand that you are a child of God and Christ Jesus died for you on the cross. Amen? You are, you are only just looking, so that's okay. You know? That's what the devil says. You're only just looking. It starts with a little bit of looking. You know, King David, uh, the story of King David and Bathsheba, he was standing in his house and he was looking and he saw a beautiful lady uh, bathing there. And it all started with looking and we know what, uh, we know what happened with the story. This lady was someone else, his husband. He ended up taking this lady to be his and he ended up sending the husband to war and the husband ended up dying because David had done something wrong and it all started with looking so looking is very dangerous it all starts with a little thing if you see that little bird it just started with looking and it looked and you say I'll have a go then it found that oh this was nice then it went and it saw it again it looked again and it kept on going if he really loves you he would have helped you from that addiction anyway. That's what the devil will lie. He will lie to us and say, you are stuck in there because no one can help you. If God really loves you, he would have helped you because he has the capacity to help you. That's a lie from the devil. God is ready and willing to help us with, with whatever we are addicted and tempted to. You know, the Bible says we are given everything we need to conquer and avoid temptations. So we just need to tap in on what Jesus has given us already. We just need to know that we are children of the most high God. Uh, we just need to know that greater is he in us than the one that is in the world. So the devil may want to come and steal our identity and lie to us and say, God is not gonna help you. God is ready to help you. It's all in the Bible. The Bible says, come and I'll take all those heavy burdens away from you. So Jesus is willing to help. He's willing to help. So these lies from the devil mostly end up taking us in the direction of addiction. And this morning we are declaring and saying, devil, liar, I don't practice. I don't look after myself first. I look after other people too. I look after them helping other people. My heart is full of grace. I want to help. Uh, People need to understand me as I'm a child of God. I am the light of the world and I'm the salt. And if it's something that I look at and I realize that this is not good, I'm just going to stop there and shut it down straight away. I don't want to just pretend like I'm just looking because the moment I look once, I would want to look again and again and again, and it leads to destruction. Amen? Uh, the, the, are we all there? We seem quiet. <laughs> I know you yeah. We're here. All right. Yeah, we're here. Loud and clear. Did it all make sense? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah. The part is discon discontentment. Mm. Discontentment leads to addiction. What's addiction are a result of our society insistence on convenience and instant gratification. It begins with discontentment and, co and covertness, uh, jealousy. Uh, you know, we just want to compete. We don't have what we want, so we seek the easiest means of getting it instead of trusting God to provide what we need. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 6.33, seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. Now. We just need to be content with what we have and where we are in life. Let's stop looking at what other people have. I think Pastor shared, shared about this right at the end of the sermon yesterday, that you look at someone's car and you say, I want to have a car like that. What that does, it leads us into paths that will lead us into addiction. We end up being addicted into wanting to get more and more and more because uh, discontentment will just lead us to self you know, it will just lead us to instant gratification. We want, we just want, we just want it now. Microwave. Mm. I've put here FOMO. We all know FOMO, fear of missing out. We always mm. missing out. That's we call it FOMO. I don't want to miss out. 
Mm. So if you don't want to miss out, you're, you're just striving to try and get what the other person has. And what that will lead us to, it will lead us to addiction. We become addicted to wanting to grab. We become addicted to wanting to get more and more, you know, chasing after what is trending. You know, there's the word trending. What's trending right now, you know, uh, youth. It's all about the trend. Hey, it's all about what's trending. You know, <laughs> trending right now, latest smartphone. I've got an iPhone 13, but my friend has got an iPhone 15C. But they're all the same. You still make calls. You still do the same thing that an iPhone 15C. Most probably the iPhone 15C is a little bit faster by a millisecond, but it's all the same. You know, so chasing after these things leads to addiction. So we become discontent with what we have. We become discontent with what Almighty God has already given us. In Hebrews 13.5, he says, don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. The love of money will lead discontentment and love of money will lead to addiction. You continue to love money and we continue to search for all these things that we bring, but God will never fail us. He has given us everything that we need. Uh, I've already spoken about this. Matthew 6, 33, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given to us as well. Uh, New Living Translation says, seek the kingdom of God above all else. Seek the kingdom of God above all these addictions and live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. He will give you everything you need, period. Seek him first and everything you need will be given unto you. Amen. Let's walk away from addiction. Let's walk away from addiction. If you can type it in the chat there, type away and say, I'm walking away from my addiction. If you can type it, just say, I am walking away from my addiction. It's okay. If you can't, if you don't have, you don't have to. But if you type it, type it, I'm walking away from my addiction. The world can feel dark, especially if you are caught in an addiction. It will feel dark. Look at that little bird. It kept on getting darker and darker and darker. The bird kept on getting darker, and the world around the bird kept on getting darker. But Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. John 8, 12. So how do we follow Christ in a dark world? How do you punch holes in the darkness of addiction? You know, addiction is dark. How do we punch holes? You know what, 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 what it's saying here? How do you punch holes in the darkness of addiction? So, so if you're in a dark, dark place and if you punch a hole, let's say like you're in a dark balloon, I'm just, uh, I'm just giving an example here. And if you punch a hole, so if, if you create a hole and outside is light, what will happen is a little bit of light will start beaming into that hole, right? And if you punch another hole, if you punch all these holes, you see some light coming in. So how do we punch holes in the darkness of addiction? And um, 1 Peter 1.13 explained it really well. Uh, 1 Peter 1.13 says, therefore, prepare your minds for action. Uh, I took it from the NASB version. That is, get mentally ready. Intentionally prepare your thought life. Before you act, plain simple, prepare your mind for action. When the devil and his adversaries try to come and tempt you, try to come and tempt you, this is great. You need to go on to this. This will bring you happiness. Um, that Netflix show, you've got to watch it. You've got to run home and finish that Netflix show. You've got to do it. You've got to wake up in the morning and watch that soccer match. You, even if it's 2.30 in the age when you're supposed to be sleeping, you've got to watch it. Uh, but then you say, no, I want to prepare my mind for it. Is it the right decision? Am I making the right de decision? Most probably not, because that decision will cause me to be dependent on that thing. You're right. Dependent on what God is. Oh, that. 
And number, number two is exercise self-control. This is just 1 Peter 1.30, and I'm just reading exactly how it's written. It says, exercise self-control. What you believe determines how you behave, thought, decision. Th what you behave, thought, decides, action. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 23, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Amen? Whatever we think in our hearts, so we become. So if we think that whatever we are putting all our effort and our mind to is, is going to give us that happiness we desire, we'll end up being that. And you, you find that you end up, you continue going and going in that direction and you end up missing what God has in store for us. We as we are walking away from that and we are depending more on Jesus. Number three, set your hope on the grace. Set your hope on Jesus. Jesus is our hope. Jesus is the only one that gives us the hope that we want. Mm -hmm. to be brought, uh, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. Jesus is coming back. Jesus left us and he left us with an abundant life. So let's set our hope on Jesus. Sometimes in the heart, sometimes in the heart, sometimes in the heart of addiction, our hope is set on smaller victories. Another day without using, another day without viewing, another day without laying a bed, just small victories. Another day without continued binge watching will cause us. On a, are we just wrapping it up now? Uh, the best addictions are be addicted to prayer. That's good. Be addicted to worship. These are the best addictions. Be addicted to the word of God. Be addicted to serving. Be addicted to fellowship with other believers. And above all, be addicted to Christ. One mm -hmm. Corinthians 5. 1 Corinthians 16, 15 and 16 says, this was Apostle Paul's uh, preaching about the other church. He says, you know that Stephanas and his households were the first of the harvest of believers in Greece, and they were spending their lives in serving to God's people. I urge you, dear brothers and sisters, to submit to them and others like them who serve. Why did I put this verse? Listen to it in King, Je in King, James, in King James Version. I beseech you, brethren, you know that the house of Stephanas, that it is the first of the fruits of Archaea, and that they have been what? Ad they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Wow. Be addicted yeah. to the ministry of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Conclusion. Amen. Given, Amen. given the broad range of addictions, it's likely that you you will either or know you that you will either know or be an addict. It's a, if you depend on anything more than you do on God, that's at best addiction. God Amen. loves you and He has best time for you that you can ever imagine. And if you know of anyone struggling from addiction, I'm just reaching out. If you are free from addiction, praise God. If you know. Anyone who's struggling from addiction, the best help is LOV. Why did I put LOV with dots? I found something amazing on, online the other day. And this is my last slide. And if you can take a picture of that, that will help with your addiction or with anyone who's going through an addiction. And this is it. It's a beautiful acronym. It's L-O-V-E. Listen. Listen to that person. Get to know them on a personal level. Don't offer. I just got this online and I thought I'll share. Don't offer any advice you have. Listen. Offer support. Support anyone who's going through addiction. Support them. If it's a child, support them. Listen to them first why they are going through that and offer support. And the V, voice God's truth. Don't be embarrassed by the promises in the book of the scriptures. Find out what God has to say in his word about breaking free from the world and speak openly about it. Certainly the heart of the gospel is love. Let you hear and know that, know that though God accept us just as we are, he loves us too much to leave us that way. 
And number and the last one is E, esteem. All people deserve some level of respect simply because they have been made in the image of God. However made that image may be, that does not mean you must agree with them or support their activity. But it means that your voice and show your respect as a living testimony to you belong to Christ. Hallelujah and amen. Mm. Faith to overcome addiction. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll just hand over to Pastor to, to, to finish.